Hey guys, what's up? Um, no need for a long introduction, we all know why we're here. Um, just so that you know, I've already prepared the data for the Pokemon, such as the Pokemon name, the sprite, the move set, and stats. So this challenge will only be focusing on building the functionality for the Pokemon game, which I'll aim to do, let's say, in 20 minutes. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable goal. But yeah, without further ado, let's just get started. Go. Alright. So this... So this game won't blow anyone's mind, but it's just a nice way to just learn and appreciate the the mechanics behind um Pokemon game. So yeah, that's that's the whole purpose of this challenge. It won't make a million dollars, it probably won't blow your mind, but to make something within 20 minutes, I think that's a pretty fun challenge. Yeah. Alright, so what we just did here was define um we just created some cells to contain the HP and the sprite of the Pokemon. Um, we're gonna do two. Comment. So this is now the cell for our commentary box. And we're also going to need to define our buttons. Trying to type and precisely and quickly at the same time, but it's proving to be very difficult. Uh, right. So there's only four moves, so we need to find four buttons. So that's why we can do this. So. Alright, cool. One, two, three. Alright. That's it for HTML. Let's go into styles. The styles we're going to um, make sure our padding's nice so that's 15 it's on the all clumped up um, they're going to display as a block oh, no, not this oh, it's... all right and also the width will be 100% That took way longer than expected. <laughs> All right, let's now go into the actual script. So I'm gonna define a Pokemon class. We've been taking in name, sprite, HP, and um, moves. All right. Uh, this HP keeps track of current HP, this H full HP keeps track of its own original max HP. And we're also going to define moves which will take in an array. And that's where we this come in. Alright, so now we have to define our spawn. We're going to also have to define our attack. So we need to define check we know. Right, so spawn will take in an argument called boo. If it's true, we're spawning our Pokemon. If it's false, then we're spawning the opponent's Pokemon. This is important because when we're spawning our Pokemon, we need to um, also um, produce or add functionality to our four move buttons. While for the opponent Pokemon, um, we don't need to because their their that the, the behavior of the opponent is automated and it runs in the background. So yeah. So we're gonna choose a random Pokemon from the list, and we're going to instantiate it. So P zero is the the name. P index one is the Pokemon's um sprite. P index two is the Pokemon's HP. P index three is the Pokemon's move set. And then um, if our boolean is true, then for i equals zero, i less than four, only have four moves to work with. Um, document, dot get element, 
remember our ID for each button is m plus a value number dot value equals Pokemon dot moves i zero. So the first element of each move it's name, and we're going to return Pokemon object. Yeah. All right. Now let's start spawning our Pokemon. Let's uh, create some Pokemon. So spawn is true, so that's our Pokemon, as I said. Oh my goodness, my typing. Alright, so sprite s1 equals document dot create image. So that's our sprite. Sprite is the link to its own image. And then remember how we define um a cell to contain our sprite, or oh, this is where this comes in. Uh, All right. And also, gonna might as well define the health status of that Pokemon. Do the same for Pokemon 2. Uh, Alright, so now we're going to have to add an event listener to each button so that they actually do something. So. Alright, so. All right, so once we have the button, we also need to know the move. It's going to take this is an external function which will pass in um, its parameters to our event listener. So it's going to be a click because we're just clicking buttons and function. It's a tap. I'm going to move. Pokemon that comes first is the attacker, Pokemon that comes second is the recipient of the attack, HP that's stated is the HP that we need to adjust, and the last argument represents its um, owner. So basically, this is more relevant to show that in the commentary where um, if the opponent, if the opponent Pokemon's attacking us, it's going to have the string um, foe prepended, prepended in front of it, so that's why we have that. It all makes sense when we run the demo or run the actual theme. So after we attack, the program's going to wait for um, two seconds before the opponent starts attacking us. And then it's going to take in. So we're being attacked, so we're, our HP is on the line. And it's foe. We're gonna have to um, add. Cool. Now we're going to go here, move, attacker, receiver, uh, HP. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, actually, we can just do straight away. And then by ID, um, we're going to make a comment to say that this particular Pokemon has attacked. So it's going to be P plus owner. Is actually um zero, and I'm um, gonna end up exclamation mark. And we're gonna... Okay, and then we're going to now um, define its accuracy. So for the data which I define for the move, the fourth element in each move array defines its accuracy. So for example, it's gonna sound so nerdy, but um. Flamethrower has like 95% accuracy, so we're going to find a number between 0 and 1, and if it falls below 0 0.95, then it will hit, otherwise, otherwise it will miss. Actually, maybe I should have find it else. Yes, I'm going to set time up function. Attack. Now we move on to this, so also um, the base power is also going to be slightly varied. So it will be incremented by a value between 0 and 1, just to I don't know, add some variation to the game. All right. So that, I guess that represents our critical hit. Yeah. Type match. So now we're going to define type matching. So the power of a move depends on its typing and also the typing of the Pokemon receiving that attack. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to have a scale. So this scale will be a, a multiply factor that um, adjusts the power level of each move. So we're going to iterate through the object. So how I've structured this data is that each Pokemon is a key in this object and each um, key has a value which comprises of three um, arrays and this array and each array represents um, a particular matching so for example the first array represents the immunity of a Pokemon for example like Charizard being half flying is immune to ground um, second array represents its weaknesses for example Charizard is weak to um, water and uh, third array is its um, resistances so, for example, Charizard is resistant to grass, hence why I'm using this switch case because there are three arrays to work. Three arrays to work with. Oh my goodness, how do people, how do people talk and code at the same time? So hard. All right. Hmm. All right. So when we hit um, an array zero, our comment will be it had no effect yeah all right and we're gonna display this a second late and i'm gonna break all right so now i'm gonna do similar for case one So when it's case one, it's weakness, we times it by two and we say it was super effective. Yeah. All right, and then we do the same thing for case. Yeah. This, it's resistance, so it's times five and you say it was not very effective. Okay, that's that. Then once we do that, we have to um, stop the loop. So we're gonna have to break out of that. And then we're going to um, power multiplies by scale 
wow, receiver, H, HP. Yeah. And document dot get and dot ID. HP, we're gonna update its um HP status, so it'll be e HP plus. No, I should have done. And now we finally determine who our winner is. So check winner HP. All right, we're nearly there. Um, so now we go into the find our HP. So um, F. So we're gonna let F equals. So if Pokemon wants HP is lower than zero, then we're gonna make this Pokemon one. Else if Pokemon is two HP reaches zero first, then we're gonna make this Pokemon two, else we're gonna define as false. And if F is not false. alert the user that game is over Actually, maybe we should also update the health status. Okay, that should be it. 17 minutes 50. Oh. Not bad, not bad. Um, hmm. Let's see if this works. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully it works. Okay, so a pen child. Right. Oh, super effective. It's uh, not very effective. Okay, let's do the pen again. And we killed Blastoise, he's dead. All right, Blastoise painted. All right, um, sir? Super effective, yeah, Dragon Claw. We're still alive, let's just surf one more time. And Charizard's dead, all right. All right, okay guys, so um, hope you guys enjoy that um, speed coding session. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. And yeah, hope to see you guys next time, yeah.